Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Uh, we're going to continue again this week with some more uh, EMS quick study uh, tips here. This is episode 8, and we're still focusing on anatomy and physiology, but now we're going to really start getting into some of the content uh, that may, you might be more familiar with, uh, some of the content that you really do see a lot more of on exams, okay? And this is why these types of uh, videos here, are, I think, are important and why this information is important because, again, if you watch the previous episodes, this is the type of stuff that you're going to end up seeing on exams. It might be a state exam, a national exam, or even a recertification exam, okay? And there's the type of things that you want to kind of refresh your memory on, right? Because we don't deal with this every day out in the field. We're not remembering these sort of, you know, little minutia type things that we deal with in EMS, right? This is why I think these videos are important. And I think that they can really help if you review certain episodes that you might be struggling with that content, okay? So today we're talking about the skeletal system, all right? And what we pretty much focus on is the 206 bones that are in the body's frame. Now, one thing I want to mention, guys, is that depending upon who you speak to, right, the UP might say it's 206, 207, 208, depends upon who you're speaking to, who, who you're breaking it down. Now, when you talk about exams, right, most of the time I don't see uh, questions and answers being asked where they'll say, uh, how many bones are there in the body, and you have 206, 207, 208, which will kind of conflict depending upon what textbook you're looking at, right? It might say 206, then say 200 or 180 or 225, so it'll be way off, okay? Just sort of, this is what I've seen, this is my experience with when you take exams, okay? Now, the primary, uh, you know, uh, uh, is, is to protect the body's internal organs and along with the muscle, it provides movement, right? The bones also store minerals, things like calcium, um, and they produce, of course, red and white blood cells as well, right? Um, now, there are four types of bones, and that would be your long bones, things like the femur, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones, okay? Um, and irregular bones can be things, uh, uh, you know, things that aren't really fitting into the other um, uh, uh, areas, right? Um, now, you have it broken down into different skeletal areas, and we talk about the axial skeleton. This is sort of like the main th deal that, that, that you know, holds your body up, right? Um, your skull, which of course is your cranium, your facial bones, your spine, all right, which is broken down even further, right, with your spine. You get seven cervical, uh, 12 thoracic, which includes those 10 ribs that are connected, and then the two floating ribs that you've probably heard of, right? And then you have your five lumbar, your five sacrum, and your four coccyx. Now, some people will tell you that the sacrum and coccyx are, are fused together and include um, all, all one together, right? The coccyx, sometimes they say that all four of those bones are fused and they count as one bone. So it depends upon what you're looking at, what your textbook says, okay? But again, when you take a test, it's going to be pretty clear if they are designed to say that the coccyx is fused or not fused. And I haven't really seen things where they try to trip you up or trick you on that type of question, okay? But to me, I've always broke it down like this, where you have seven, seven, twelve, five, five, and 4. Okay, and that's how I remember it, 7, 12, 5, 5, 4, and I go from top to bottom. That's how I remember this part of the actual skeleton, okay? Now, you also have the appendicular skeleton, okay? This is the other parts of the body, not the, sort of the, the, the side part, right? The scapula, which is your shoulder girdle, your clavicle, um, your arms, which are the humerus, the radius, and the ulna, okay? Your hand, carpals, metacarpals, and the phalanges, which are your fingers, Right, your pelvic, which is uh, pelvic girdle, which is your ilium, ischium, and your pubis, the leg, which of course the big femur, the tib and the tibia and fibula, that tib fib fracture you always hear a lot about, right? And then your feet, which are the tarsals, metatarsals, and again the phalanges. Now, one tip, I don't know if you can use this or not, but when I think about the hand and the feet, right, very confusing. Tarsals, carpals, metacarpals, metatarsals. I think the letter T. For toes, so you think for feet, your tarsals, your metatarsals, right? That's how I think and it helps me remember that part of the body, okay? 
Again, whatever works for you to remember this stuff is great. Uh, I'm trying to get this information out there so that you can kind of pick up on these little key elements here, all right, of the things that you're going to see on a test that you usually will see on a test. Now, again, it might not be all of these things that I'm talking about, okay? But, you know, it's easy to remember the arm has the radius and the arm or the leg or the tibia or fibula. But the pelvic might be a little more tricky to remember that stuff, right? Or differentiating between the tarsals and carpals might be a little bit more difficult. So just keep that in mind. Now, what about joints? Well, we talk about joints, and this is where you're getting two or more bones that meet. They are able to articulate and move, and the movement often is aided by cartilage, right? It's not gonna do it by itself. So you have to have some sort of, you know, cushion there to help move the bones, okay? So that movement's aided by the cartilage. And the cartilage is three types. You have your movable type of cartilage, things like the cranium, um, slightly movable, like the spine, and then the movable um, bones, things like ball and socket, you know, your shoulder, uh, your elbows, like a hinge, things like that, your, your hip, Okay, um, so those are three different types of cartilage. Now, finally, I just want to wrap this up today when we talk about the skeletal system and just talk real quick about ligaments and the tendons. And these are something a lot of times I'm, I'm telling you this is a common question on tests. Uh, don't throw this question away. Okay, and ligaments join bone to bone, tendons join muscle to bone. Okay, so. Keep that in mind because you, you a lot of times you'll see that question that will ask you what joins bone to bone. And they'll have ligaments and tendons both as an option. And you're going to have to remember that the ligaments do the bone to bone. Okay. And the tendons, again, tendons join muscle to bone. All right. So those are kind of important stuff. Like I said, this I'm not breaking this down exactly what the ligament does and what it's made of and all that good stuff. Right. That's for your textbook. This is your quick study tips and the quick elements here that I hope will help you moving forward. And when you go to sit down for your exam, that these types of key points are going to help you uh, re recall it when you see the choices given to you. Okay, so check out this video, all the videos before. We're going to have more videos, of course, in the future. Next week, we're going to be starting on the nervous system. And we're going to start really getting into some more really great meat and potatoes of the uh, EMS quick study tips and what you'll see on exams and, and breaking down everything that's in a 500 page textbook into these quick videos. And speaking of meat and potatoes, of course, we have the EMS quick study guide and this guide pretty much is, is what we're including in these videos in a written format, okay? So if you wanna go ahead, grab this guide, guys. It's available in digital format so you can download it to your computer and re re you know, reference it whenever you want. So when you have a PDF, Viewer, you can view it, okay? Or you can get the actual physical copy of it, which is a spiral bound book. It's about a hundred and some pages. You can put it in your in your knapsack, in your book bag, keep it on your shelf. Great resource for, for your EMS library. Go ahead and review this before you take the test. And I think you're gonna find, even if you review it before you start studying for your upcoming test, it'll kind of give you an idea of where your having issues recalling things, right? So if you read stuff in this quick study guide and you're kind of seeing you're struggling with a cardiology issue or with a uh, anatomy physiology issue or maybe an OBGYN issue, you can go back to your textbook and really focus and drill down on uh, some more you know, in-depth areas of that subject, okay? So it's a great way to do it that way. It's also great to go back and review this just before your exam. And I think I've mentioned this before, but I, I've used this guide over and over again throughout over over 15 years. I've you know I've used this guide, okay, and I use it before I take a test, and it always helps me, okay, recall a lot of little bitty things that you see on exams. Okay, the type of questions that are kind of those questions that should be give me questions that you should not be giving up five, ten points on an exam for questions being asked. So check this out. I don't want to push you too much, but Again, great stuff to use. I actually just used this about um, six, seven months ago. I took the FISDAP exam. I used this for that, and I actually scored higher on the FISDAP exam than the national average. So that gives you any kind of clue, okay, how resourceful this guide is. So click on the link here to get some more details on that. So next week, like I said, we're going to start in with the 
uh, nervous system, uh, and so I'm kind of excited about that. I'll start breaking that down. That might actually be a few videos because it's kind of a big, even for a quick tip sort of resource. Uh, but until then, you know, uh, let me know if you like these Monday minutes. If you want to see something else or some other information about EMS that you want to see here on the Monday minutes, just send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. Until next time, as always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.